Hello everyone. So welcome back to another episode in the boss battle system. So today we are going to implement this uh, sword throwing attack for the boss as you can see in this preview. So you can see uh, the boss throws some swords at us and before he throws them we can see the where they are going to hit with this uh, pointers these marks on the ground so that's what we are going to implement today right so first uh, let's go to the boss folder and I'm gonna create um, a new child class from the attack base I'll call it attack javelin because sorry java because throwing because it is throwing swords right so now uh, let me just place this right there uh, so that's the child class so let's start modifying this right uh, so for testing purposes in the begin play I'll call uh, we have this charge event so I'll call it in the begin play so that we can make it to the attack automatically but what it does is like uh, the regular slamming that we have already implemented that's what happens here so let's uh, override we don't need to change the fade in part we can use the same fade in part uh, but we can change this launch attack and we can use the same fade out part as well so let's override the launch attack part so let me just copy this the same code that we used for the attack base and paste so now by doing this we can override the uh, law oh no okay, let's type launch attack event right now the parent method parent uh, event of the launch attack will be overridden by the one we have defined here okay so in the event tick here we change uh, we actually change only the Z component of the rotation of the actor uh, to make the uh, made make the sword uh, always face like this to the player so let's override this part as well so here let me remove the parent tick mm -hmm. and let's get some space here let's set at uh, and let's find again let's find the lock uh, rotation to the player using get that uh, location find look at rotation the start is the location of this actor target is the play actor location location of the player so get player character right and let's completely connect this so uh, earlier we only connected this set because we don't need to have any changes to the yo or pitch but now we need the sword to directly point at the player okay um, now let's see how it looks nothing different mm. 
yeah now in the launch attack here so because of this 90 that's why sword is pointing upwards so i'll make this one zero and is it let's keep it as 90 now let's see what happens the sword should point at us before doing the So we can get rid of this move component to and this one. Uh, uh, no, actually, uh, we can't get rid of that yet. Let's calculate. Um, now what we need is we need to throw uh, the sword towards the player so let's for that we need to actually we can just use the player location but if we do it like that then player will have no chance of avoiding the attack so in order to give a chance let's calculate it like this uh, first let's do a line trace uh, to the player's location with some offset uh, then let's spawn uh, some decal that shows where the sword is going to hit and after a second or so let's do the attack so in that way player will have a chance to jump away from the target location of the sword right so to calculate the location um, let's get a uh, character location and let's add some offset here uh, I'll promote this as a variable let's call it offset because when we have multiple throwing swords we can have different offsets so that they will be thrown into different places not the same place all right as the default value let's say minus 100 right now I'll promote this to a variable let's call it target and I'll set the target here Right now, we need to make sure there are nothing in between this target and the sword. If there is something blocking, then of course the sword should stop in that blocking object, on that blocking object. So let me collapse this part. Set target. Now we can do another line trace. But channel as the starting location, we can use get actor location, 
and as the end we can use the target location let's use visibility or camera both will work for now and actors to ignore I don't need this red tra uh, this line trace to be blocked by the player so let's add player as an actor to ignore and here if we get a hit let's set that hit location as the target Otherwise, we don't need to change the existing, the current target uh, because nothing blocking that target location, the line to that target location. And I let debug type for duration. Right now, the target is set. Let's see if we get a line trace. Oh, it's wrong. Why did it got there? All right. Uh, actually, here, let's remove this six hundred offset in the, of the sword uh, because sword. Uh, because we are turning pointing towards the player uh, having this offset could be a problem yeah now let's check all right now it correctly points okay uh, now We have the target now instead of moving here let me break this I'm not gonna change the rotation uh, as the target relative location oh wait we don't really have to move the ah, here we are moving the road okay that's what we need to do let's move it to the target and get relative rotation right now let's see what happens see now the sword is thrown towards us let's check again okay right now let's work on the damage uh, decal the indicator that shows the point where the sword is going to hit so for that I have uh, created this marker it's just a PNG image I have imported it to the project uh, let's create a new folder decal. right and let's uh, move the decal image there and let's create a material decal mat let's call it m decal right uh, now this should be in the I need to use it with the decal so change the blend mode to defer decal
blend mode should be translucent okay right now I'll connect alpha channel like this so we will have opacity mm. let's add the color multiplier so that we can set any color we need actually it's not necessary to multiply we can just connect the color directly as well since this is all white right uh, okay we need only alpha or opacity detail from this texture and let's add a emission as well let's call it emission value let's say three okay right and hit apply then let's create a decal and test that material select the material here mm, it looks good uh, but the size I'm not sure this may be too large so, but also this need to rotate so let's add a custom rotator and connect text coordinate to the UV Rotation center cons tend to vector. This should rotate around the middle of the texture. So 0.5 by 0.5 should be the pivot. Uh, rotation angle. Uh, let's connect time to this so that we time we have a variable rotation angle let's multiply the time with some multiplier so that we can slow it down we can control the speed let's try 0.5 and connect see now it is rotating and I think this speed is also fine so let me apply this here All right, and we have a small problem in the edges, but that's not really a problem. It's fine. Okay, now we need to dynamically spawn this decal when we before we throw in the sword. So in the set target, after the target is set. let's spawn a decal at location uh, decal m decal material decal size let's try 150 150 by 150 uh, rotation yeah I don't think we have to change it location should be 
this target location life span let's say four seconds right and uh, instead of making it directly appear let's set a uh, fade in one second and then fade out also one second after one minute one second start in delay and before the sword is thrown there should be some time for player to run away or evade so let's try a delay like 1.2 seconds this should be enough right now let's see right it worked let's move it up a little bit okay great and now let's add this to the boss character instead of making it placed like this um uh, right So this is the attack logic. Um, let me collapse this part. This is spawning part of the attack base. Wait, why can't I collapse? Let's call it sword slam and let's disconnect it temporarily and add a reroute node to get some space here. Let's name this one javelins. now here what i'm gonna do is let's add a loop first index let's start with minus one and plus one so i'm gonna spawn three of the javelin attacks three javelin attacks basically so in the loop body spawn from class javelin attack javelin right and this spawn transform rotation and scale can keep as default values for the location uh, uh, let's get at the location so this will return the location of the boss and let's add plus 400 because the sword should appear above the boss and also let's add some factor using this another one let's get at right vector multiply this with uh, some value like 200 so this could be decided using the index so if we get the minus one this will be uh, 
there will be a minus 200 offset for the zero we will have no offset that coming with the multiply of right vector so we this way we can have separate locations for three sorts right and in the same way let's set offset also but here I'm gonna keep the offset is set as minus 100 so that it will always end up in the ground at least half of the sword in the ground and let's connect other two with this multiplier right and here let's now remove this charge from the beginning play and let's call charge here it will work in the same way but let's keep it like that All right, shall we see what happens now? Wait, where were they spawned? Uh, Oh, sorry, I have connected the scale. I should connect this to location and always spawn ignore collisions. Right. Okay. And this and they attacked in the same time without any delay in between that's not really good doesn't really look good so um, let's add another parameter Let's make some changes like this. In the where is charge event right here. Let's set a delay. And make it as a parameter. Default value zero. Let's call it charge delay. Right. And uh, here, let's add one, add one to the index of the loop and multiply it by 0.5. So each sword will be thrown with the 0.5 second window. Oh wait. Something is wrong. Yeah, the default value of the I think I should set this delay before launching the attack okay so better to call this uh, 
not the charge delay charged delay so after it is charged um, how much we should wait before launching the attack let's call it charged delay and the launch attack will here yeah. oh no not there not here we can use it here after fading in we can give some delay before launching the attack now they appear same time okay cool Alright, so I'm going to stop this episode right here and let's work on another attack type next time in this uh, boss battle series. And as always, project files will be available for the download through Patreon page. Link would be in the description below. And if you like to support my work, you can get the membership of the Patreon club. Thanks for watching. See you in another episode. Goodbye.